Now that we've started, and here we are for this, the 14th episode of the Chronicles of Telmora campaign. In our party tonight, we have Ned, played by Norvin. I'm trying to eat. Fair enough. We have Bellum, played by Connor. I tried to eat. Sadness. Pathetic. We have Kagaz, played by Shane. You miss me, you gits. Very much so now. I don't have to do that lovely voice. Fractal the Maidenless, played by Pyro. I am unable to eat. I mean, you can. It just kind of incinerates. And Sutha the Half-Light, played by Nito. Comment on my diet. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> when last we left our party, they had made their way to the uh, research city of Isalon on the continent of Ascaria. In search of some answers uh, regarding the ley lines and possibly uh, why certain things happened to Bellum's Grove. Just any answers about that? Uh, you got some answers in the library and then uh, discovered that the Hall of the Arcane is a wizard school. Wizard university, more, more or less. Uh, and that there was a botany class that one of the interns in the library was going to very quickly, which Bellum sprinted over to meet with him after spending a bit too much time with Fractal. Uh, the botany class was where we left off after Connor bullied me into finding something to talk about regarding botany. Uh, I There is a handout on World Anvil now for all of the... Uh, the pro or the heads of department. There are more professors than just that, but those are the heads of each respective department. Uh, yes, you are still level five. And the uh, the departments that are available in the school, not individual classes, just broad departments. Uh, so I guess we will start off. Bellum had just finished his class. Let's go back to let's 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 go back to uh, to Sutha and. Kagaz, Kagaz, you had just kind of been vibing in the lib in the lobby, not the library. The lib the lobby of the library. <laughs> uh, generally intimidating passersby, various researchers and college students alike, as they wandered through. And Sutha had been uh, listening in to different researchers and people spreading rumors. Is there anything else you wanted to do? I'm gonna. Kaga is gonna stroll up to if there's a nearby group of students that are like working on something. He's gonna look at what they're doing. Uh, so there is a group of students that has just come in. Um, they're kind of shuffling around one of the doors. Uh, on one side of the lobby, the opposite side of where the reception desk is, there is a, a wall of doors that are research labs that can be. Uh, some of them are dedicated to certain departments and some of them can just kind of be checked out similar to a practice room in the school of music when I, where I went to college. Um, so you see some students huddling around that kind of talking about like, uh, I thought you had the key. No, I thought you had the key. Which one of us has the key rune? They're just sort of bickering gently about that. Oh, you get. <laughs> Well, I ain't even intimidate you yet. These are I, above board. These are a bunch of nerdy, like small wizards in their early twenties. You said gits, and they're intimidated. They, most of them are like refusing to turn around. They're all trembling, and one of them kind of turns and looks at you. Uh. Hi. What? You lock out here, little lab thing? Uh, w well, uh, I mean, for right, right now, since we can't, uh, y y y you know, since we, we can't find the, the key for now, we are. But um, as soon as we find it, or, or ask for someone to let us in, then, then, yes? What, they got this thing all arcane locked or something? 
yeah, more or less. It's a bit it's a bit more complicated, but yeah, that's what it's based on. Yes, I can't just go smashing the doorknob then. Please don't. I would get in so much trouble. Please don't. Our whole group would just get in so much trouble. Well, think of it as a little lesson for your school kids. When there ain't no way, you make the way. I will keep that in mind. Thank you, uh, sir. That's Iron Jaw to you. Yes, sir, Iron Jaw. I didn't say put the sir in front of it. Okay, sorry, Iron Jaw. I look like a fancy nobleman to you. I don't know anymore. I'm just very terrified right now. <laughs> All right, do your stupid school stuff now. Okay. And so walk away. <laughs> what a the menace! Rest of ah. them just been quietly digging through their bags, and one of them goes. Oh, thank the divines, I found it. And they press a little stone to the door and it opens and they all rush in and shut it behind them. He's gonna approach Fractal and Sutha and just, like, blow on the end of his gauntlet and just rub it. Ah, Fractal that was funny. is in the library proper. Sutha is in yeah, the Yeah, you see the mirage is Fractal's actually coat hanger. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that was fun. It's been a while since I've been in some sort of research land. Aside from that one library. Yeah. Sutha's so thinking about something else. Her eyes are kind of wandering around. Thinking about the rumors you've heard? That and wonder what that explosion was and just... <laughs> yeah. There was an yeah, explosion in one of the labs. Um, at this point, about 10 or 15 minutes ago. F Lord, get in there. I was gonna say, has Ned approached us yet? Because, or is he still doing his thing around being sneaky? No, that's a good question, no. Ned. <laughs> what are you doing? Once he was done, he knew they were where they were going, so he'd just go there, gets to the library, and sees them all there. And there they all are. He won't um make a fuss about entering. He's just gonna. If they need him, he's there. So do you What's you been up to, Shorty? Oh, that was just out of character. I didn't know if he was approaching or like if he was done with what he was doing. Yeah, Ned's done. D Ned's uh now has a small book and is reading. He'll give you like a little wave. Hi. What's your reading? The finer points of a good wah. <laughs> That's some good literature right there. <laughs> the words and the illustrations, they they can't just get the right amount of the wah in it, but they try. <laughs> and boy, do they try. It is his personal journal he was writing in it. <laughs> But that uh, that absolutely is a book now. <laughs> As they're talking about that, she'll kind of just enter in conversation while they're having it, just kind of say the things that she heard, and also say something about. I thought I saw, hmm, very much looked like a knight here in the school. No, I... looked like a like a paladin. Hmm. I don't know why he'd want to study wizardry or, you know, these all this scientific stuff, but I don't know what he's wanting to learn. But yeah, she'll mention all these rumors. And Would you like to mention the rumors? Because uh, you're the only person she I does. sent them to. She, she does. She does. That's why I post them. That he... Oh, okay. Ned has a few of them as well. Like the uh, associates looking for them, but she got the uh, Warforged part of it. So, yeah. Warforged. Yeah, heard about that. Um, <laughs> I wonder who they're looking for. Just glances at a uh, fractal. Neither, neither of us are here. Fractal is neither not visible. Fractal then fractal, the move your fucking office. token. Fractal's in this building. He's, it's in the library okay. section. So you guys are in the lobby of the library. Okay, you monkeys, get back! Fractal <laughs> is in the library. All right, here first. Scoot. Look, looks to Kagaz. Looks to Ned. 
Gee, I wonder who could match that description. Yes. Uh, we'll let him know once he's done doing whatever he's doing. Um, where's Bellum? Also, Bellum. in the also, library. Where is Fractal? No, Bellum is in the Hall of the Arcane, finishing up a botany lab. And it's oh, Ned right. asking because Ned has no clue. They both went in there. Uh, they're either together or I'm not too sure, but they're probably near each other. If not, they're here in the building. You all would have seen Bellum sprint for his life out of the building. He headed that way. Why is he repeating late college student energy, but he doesn't even go here? He doesn't even mm. go here. I can make a couple of these kids run like I that. I mean, if you're in the lobby, you might be able to see Fractal just... I'm. Uh, we'll be leave off at the last thing he's doing, going over a bunch of uh, different sheet of paper, uh, one of which is his schematics. Yes, that sounds right. Yeah. Well, Clanky's up in here in the library reading, and then Lanky ran out there, probably to do some different reading. If I could read up this here, I could just come up to me about three persons. It's here to go. It's well, then, I suppose we should um, find an inn. Probably find a nice place to settle down. I'm a little, uh, I'm a little curious on these orcs. And Attention all students, everyone that goes here. Oh no. Oh no. You see a lot of people, just a lot of heads immediately turn your direction. Wishes to, where is the happiness? Who holds, what place, what house is known to have the, what do the kids say these days? Dankest parties. Oh. <laughs> I did not know Sutha was was that much of a boomer. Okay, this is fun. Let's go. You get several very blank looks. You're you're asking a bunch of sciencey nerds where the party's at. <laughs> I'm not gonna ask you to make me an insight check after that comment. You do kind of gather after that. Going, these kids have grades to keep up. You're basically asking a bunch of. Well, no, honor students can party pretty hard. You're asking a bunch of repressed, like, Poindexter nerds that hey. experimenting <laughs> constantly. What, y'all don't party in the labs? Come on. Somebody's got to know where something is. Well, let me into one of them labs and I'll show you. <laughs> no, Kagaz, you'd blow the whole building up. Well, was that explosion in there? I kind of... I kind of take that as a sense of endearment. You think I can blow it up by reaching one lab? Ain't no party like the Kagas. Party because the Kagas. Kaga party. party don't stop. I ain't stopped since I joined you. It's very true. Well, I ain't a fan of undead. Well, cats. Undead cats combination. And cultists. Blacksmith mythin. Hmm. I think the cult is this one and the blacksmith might be tied together. Ned, what were your again? Uh, the thing about fractal information for that one. What was the other one? Uh, that's all I got. I didn't get anything else. Oh, okay. All right. Other than that, it's an older woman. Uh, she's a very unsettling elf and a uh, assistant that's decent looking but very aggressive. Well, ain't that the science duo? And for some <laughs> strange reason, when I gave those descriptions, Pyro got very uncomfortable. I don't know what you're talking about. I am a, the living embodiment of, of a vibe check. It's almost as if while he was AFK, while those descriptions were going off, a certain player was messaging and going, <laughs> backstory lines, Yeah, backstory I, I lines. literally, as right before you, know, you got to, uh, uh, to Ned, I had to get up and go deal with something very urgent. Uh -huh. And then I came back halfway through the, the description. Of and like, wait. and there's a uh, this uh, elf woman, and then like there's like four or five messages from Connor, like, look, thing, all right, this is what they're saying, and like, oh, 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 oh no, <laughs> which is just hmm. it's hilarious to me, and Pyro knows why. Fractal turns up as what? Leaves what time game. of day is it? What time of day is it? Uh, now? at this point, it's probably about like late afternoon, early evening, like between three and five. Well, Suka, Ned, uh, 
Well, I know you don't like leaving Fractal. Ned, you think you can find a little in force? And then I'm going to look for Lanky. He's going to grab a nearby college student. <laughs> no. Before whatever he's about to do, that's going to be hilarious. Uh, she's going to uh, look at Ned. And Ned, can you perhaps ask around about any previous whereabouts the blacksmith was since he's been missing for over a week? Norman? I'm sorry. Uh, someone was talking to me. What's going on? You're good. You're. Uh, he was, uh, Sutha was just going to ask. Sutha was just going to ask if, uh, well, uh, Cog has asked you to look for an N. Uh, if you could perhaps listen around, try hear anything about the blacksmith that went missing, or I guess anything about the horde of orcs gathering near Dorn Doral. All right. Yeah, I got posted in uh, roll twenty. Ned will pop up, clap his hands together. All right. You can do the sending thing, right, Sutha? Sending. I believe that's in this cleric spell list. Yeah. It is a cleric spell, but do you have it, it prepared? Is. Funny enough, you should ask. I don't know why I had it prepared, but I do, yes. Ew. All right, so you hang out Not here until our two wayward students come back. I should have found an inn by then. Shoot me ascending. I mm. will tell you where I found the inn, and we can meet up there. Kagas! Kagas Let's go make has, some trouble for the city. He has a student in his grip. Uh, I was about to ask him something real quick. Ask away. We can go check. Li we got plenty of time. If I know Fractal and we all know Bell on this, that could take a while, so y'all should have plenty of time. Yep. Well, turns to the student. Turns to the currently enslaved student. Uh -huh. Boy, nerd. Is Any other place in this little town? Oh, city. That, uh, you know it's locked together other than this place? Uh, I mean, the inn? Bonks him on the head. Oh. You know what I meant. Don't try to beat around it. I Any other nerd gathering know. zone? You got a library full of research? Like Any other place? My like, god, oh, you might be stupider than me. <laughs> Look, we're in the research group, right? Got in the research district. Building full of books. Nerds like to gather. You got another place like it? Another place full of books? Oh, another place full of books. Okay. Uh, I mean, there are, there's a smaller, uh, there's smaller, like, sort of pseudo libraries in the Hall of the Arcane. That's all you had to say. I didn't know you were looking for another book place. I thought you were looking for, like, a fun place. The other one of you had asked about where the kickingest parties are earlier. I don't know. Ernst and Ed, well, I ain't low wisdom. Drops a kid. I Hold on. Hold him means. still and turns him around so he's facing away and writes some shit on his back. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, uh, this is this is this is uh, is the kid wearing pants with a zipper? With a zipper? strange question. No. <laughs> yeah. He's wearing pants, but they do not have a zipper. Okay, I was gonna make a high and low wisdom joke, but okay. <laughs> like you can remember all these complex calculations, but you can't remember to zip up your fly. Oh no, they're like drawstring pants. Well, Kagaz wrote "dumbass" on the back of his his shirt <laughs> and pushed him along. All right, you serve your purpose. Thank you. It wasn't a compliment. All right, now let's roll. The thoroughly traumatized college student just sprints away from you. I'm just prepping him for the real world. You really are. We are going to go find... Um, Damn. We're going to go ask around about the blacksmith and just listen in. Listen in. Going to find a decent inn. Nothing spectacular, but nothing cheap. And, uh... 
Find if there's anywhere in this town to get in trouble. For fun. Oh. oh. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Now you speak in my language. Okay, which one of those would you like to do first, Ned? Uh, he would want to find the end first. Find the end first. Okay, uh, so looking around, it's it's pretty well labeled since there are people that would travel to this city that are more just passing through to drop off things for research that are not locals, so it is labeled. Uh, you see a sign. Uh... On this building over here, uh, the Laughing Lamia. That's, that's a, that's a name. That They went with a name. It's a name. It's, it's not creepy in the least. Why the fuck would they go with the Laughing Lamia? <laughs> well, I don't want to hear one like, of them. He looks up at Cogaz and just kind of goes, you know what a Lamia is, right, man? That's them snaky gits, right? Yeah. They eat God, little man. gits like me. Well, I might eat little gits like you. Whole? Eh, <laughs> if I'm in the mood. You choke on me, Kagas. Come on. That's Wouldn't stop oh me God. from trying. If there's a Lamia innkeeper in here, we are definitely staying somewhere else. And he goes... <laughs> Oh, come on. Even if the llama you got a little hungry and tried to nibble on you, I'm right here. The you would better to see if she could see, door, get me down. Uh, the signpost that's painted above the door looks oddly like the Starbucks mermaid, but like facing slightly to the side and with her mouth open as if, as if in laughter. Just enough to avoid, you know, copyright infringement of the Starbucks mermaid. <laughs> Even if I let her try to wolf you down, I know exactly where you are in her mouth, so I just cut around it. Good to know. Good to know. Good to know, buddy. Good to know. All right. Who's the innkeep here? Uh, it, you go inside, and the innkeep is a, a dwarvish woman. See, nothing to be worried about. Another shorting. You're right at home. Please describe this dwarven woman. Uh, she stands probably about four feet tall. She's very stocky. Um, she has all sorts of uh, beads and clasps braided into her hair and her beard. Um, they're, they look handmade. They're not super ornate and rich looking, uh, but they are beautiful and they're all tied together. Probably were all made around the same time or at least made to look like they match. Um, she is standing behind the counter uh, wiping down glasses or mugs, whichever. Standing on a stool, I expect. You can't tell from here, but probably. How tall is the counter? Yeah, I was about to say, based on how, how tall the counter is, she is either doing some sort of levitation or she has some sort of stool or the bar platform behind it is raised entirely. Well, howdy, miss. Oh, howdy. That's not something we hear around here very often. Where are you from? Not here. Clearly. What can I do for you? What would be the cost for a uh, couple rooms for the night? Uh, let's oh. see. One, two, three. Three rooms. Three rooms for the night. Give me just a moment. She opens up her ledger, which is uh, code for the DM is going to the D&D 5th edition player's handbook. It's modest, right? Yeah, it'd normally be modest. Yeah, it's modest. Uh, it's one gold a room. Alrighty. Ned will flick you. out five gold and put it on the counter. Alright, thank you very much. She sweeps it off and uh, you can kind of tell that she's putting it in a lockbox beneath the counter. You've Not that kind of this. rogue. It It's less right. of like, oh, you know she's putting it in a lockbox and more of just like, 
you know that when you're doing a transaction with a merchant, they either like put it in a pouch or a satchel or they have it's that's basically she's putting it in her cash drawer. What's your most expensive and best beer? And if you water it down, I'm gonna cut you in half. First of all, I'm insulted that you think I'd ever water down a good beer. You'd be surprised how many people have already tried it. Yeah, people. You're getting an incredulous look from Ned as well at this point. People, I'm a motherfucking dwarf. Yeah. And I ain't put it past no stunties to try to fake me out either. Glad I already paid for the rooms. <laughs> Using slurs right in front of her. Let's see. Alright. Fine. Hey, I'm a full blooded orc. I ain't get along with stunties, I ain't get along with me. And I'll live with it. There's already a big stone book behind you being written in, and then an axe <laughs> driven by a ginger getting ready to jump you out. <laughs> fresh mohawk! Fresh mohawk! Where is it? Where, am I? Where is what I'm looking for? There it is. Alright. Alright. Fine. You want a gallon or a mug? Give me the damn barrel barrel, alright, of our best and finest beer. That's for right. A whole, for a whole barrel, that's ten gold. Ten? Ten. I ain't shit. Give me that. <laughs> Just a reminder that the DM does not know how pricing works. We already know that. Hey, how much is a mug of it? We need to go uh, mug store bandits, guys. I know a bottle of wine, wine. like five or ten gold. A so fine I mean, bottle of wine is ten gold. So I mean, a a, a keg of a, a beer. A keg of beer would probably be around a hundred something. Oh really? Yes. yes. Okay. Then pro then we'll do a hundred. I listen. <laughs> I'll oh, take that too. This is not where I specialize, friends. It's a damn good thing you're cute. Thanks. <laughs> Hold on, Connor. In case she didn't know anything. In yeah. case I don't know anything. Just in case I don't know anything. For Go once, on. for once, can you all do Just a smackdown without slapping me on the way back? No. 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 <laughs> you're basically, you're basically the sign on the exit door that everyone just. <laughs> I really. <clears throat> anyway. Yeah, so it's uh yeah, it's a hundred gold, you pay it. Uh let me see if fantasy name generators has beer names. Brewery it's gotta be a pun. Drink names, there we go. It's gotta be a pun. It's gotta be a pun. All beers are pun names. Or is light. Tell me the pun there. Piss water. <laughs> <laughs> It's Swasa. Uh, that was that was hair fired. <laughs> Immediately had no time for my bullshit. I'm so <laughs> confused. I don't. I don't. I feel like I should. I should tell you guys if I haven't told you already. I don't drink beer. Good. You're. You, you don't have to I listen to either. So you don't have to listen to North. Name it whatever you want. Right, yeah, I don't drink beer either. It's just <laughs> tastes awful. There, it... I mean, lawnmower is not a pun. They just take a real beer and change a couple letters, make it Coors Light to Moore's Light, etc. Mud Light feels too too rude. I, don't I like that. Mud Light. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh... I'm taking Mud Light. You can take Mud Light. <laughs> like, look at stuff up now going, next. uh... Drink names. <sighs> With the wicked Twister. Wicked Rum pizza. Tornado. <laughs> what? Rum the tornado. Wicked Pisser. Oh, you like a book? I'm like a pisser, yeah? Wait, hold on. Dwarven Beals and Airs. There we go. It is the uh, Mount Carmen Porter. Ooh. Sure. Because you need a Mount Carmen somewhere. 
Or the in innkeeper's name is Carmen. Or favoriting this page. There we go. There's the name of your herb. It, is, it, it tastes the way a porter should taste. Which is to say I have no clue how a porter should taste. It's just got the whole keg on his shoulder. There you go. You have a whole, well, a whole keg. Well, them nerds ain't know where the party's at, so I'm gonna make it myself. <laughs> oh yeah, those lots have no idea what they're doing. Sometimes they come, they literally bring books into the end. Jesus. That's what I see. But you make a lot of money off, I don't know. Oh, I sure as shite do. Can't really complain, as long as I'm taking their money. That's probably oh, why they work scandal around Here's anyway. There's another one. That Oi! New. Hold on, before you go making fun of that one, that's my nerd. She gives you a very piercing look. She's going to make an insight check on you. She's saying, you can sort with the nerd folk? Is there any... Is there any way that she could, with basically the equivalent of, like, a 13, accidentally get the vibe that you and, and Lanky are dating? Ran and had the next line. Kagas was about to go up and make fun of him. <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know. Well, because you said, hold on. That's my nerd. What do you go up and say to him? You know what? You just made me forget. Son of a Aw, bitch. Aw, damn it. Sorry. Damn. Hi, Kagas. Um, this is a, a nice inn. Yeah, why are you here? I started wandering. Uh, I had a meeting with the dean, or a head of the department, and I just kind of started wandering about, figuring I'd run into you all. Here we are. Yeah. This is one of the idiots that's staying with me. So he's in one of our rooms. I wouldn't say idiot. <laughs> Name's Lanky. Would... Supervision it's is not, right up but and okay. Low. It's Bellum, but, you know, Lanky's our nickname. It's, a, it's an us thing. You can say it, but not others, you know. It's like... <laughs> oh, I'm gonna say that it. puts a big smile on her face. She's she's looking between the two of you like, I get it. I get it now. She the has sex. she has connected the two dots. She's connected the two... You're she, welcome, universe. She definitely for... thinks the two of you are a thing. She very much thinks that... that, that uh, that Kagaz and Bellum are a thing. Especially with Bellum saying, like, it's an us thing. You can call me that, but other people don't get it. She thinks it's a special nickname between lovers. No. Uh, and uh, with my 20 insight and his 24, She's do we pick that up? It. You all pick it up. She's not subtle about it. She's got this big grin yeah. on her face like, okay. Kagaz is like, you know... Uh, Maybe Norman's she not gonna correct her. <laughs> Kagaz, he he thinks that's right. what she's inferring, but he's also conflicted on like she wouldn't dare think something like that. So maybe it's just misreading. <laughs> Are you sure you'll be needing all five rooms? I mean, we, we do have rather rooms. large bed. You only need three rooms. That's how much he asked for, wasn't it? Uh, wasn't I really said paying four. attention. I said four. You said five, you paid five gold. Yeah. I said four, and I paid five. Oh, it was a tip. Okay, I got it now. That's because... Oh. That's because Clanky and Half-Light always room okay. together, what? All right, so are you sure you won't be needing three rooms? I mean, if you and uh, your nerds are going to be sharing a room... <laughs> I, I, I'm starting to object to being referred to as his nerd here. I I think there's more to me than just being the intelligent one in the party. Bitch! I mean, <laughs> fractal junked his head through a wall. <laughs> I guess he can be the one that did cave-ins. <laughs> he just got oh. his head slumps. Just, 
Oh. No, bro. <laughs> Personally, I... He'd also be the one that has brought about almost every problem <laughs> we've dealt with so far. You want to keep going? Thank God. I think this we have is... a lovely private room I can put the two of you up in. They're not a couple. <laughs> I was just going to let this go on because I thought it was a little funny, but now it's just kind of creepy. I did not a couple. That. A couple? A couple? Yeah, she couple. thought the two of you were knocking boots. I did. The way you two are talking to each other and the... Down on the ground. And the whole, you know... Oh, it's an us thing. You can call me that, but other people can't. No, you like, see, while well, he's he intelligent, he's but actually really the dumb. the vent. Or through the, through the counter. That's what you to me. That's what you were oh. saying to me. I'm saying I'm the only one I guess make fun of him because I'm the funniest one. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you just say that in the first place? That because the plug was in turn. Now see that I would have believed a lot more. The I'm fact sorry, that you believed the first one in the first place, it's already a mistake! I was a bit skeptical, I mean... First off, look at him. He's all lanky. He wouldn't even exactly survive. We're in the same league. <laughs> sorry, Philip was standing like, like two feet away from Kalyas, like poking his fingers together awkwardly. He's like, no, it's fine, I'll wait. She's, she said, yeah, I wouldn't exactly say you're in the same league. And she looks at Bell and goes, sorry, son. You know, if that was an ins if that was an insult to him, then good job. If it's an insult to me, then fuck you. No, no, I you're definitely in the higher league. You didn't bring a book into a bar. I think you'll find I have a char a roguish charm to my intelligence that I think you've overlooked. I heard the sentence back and I fumbled this. Let me start again. No, hmm. no, please Bellum. don't. Bellum, 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 <laughs> Bellum, just, just. <laughs> Just stop, please. I'm just, You're I'm just curious. Me. How much, how much <laughs> of the campus have I burned down in this interim? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Alexandria. Not in the fractal. <laughs> uh, if, what? <laughs> I guess that I was laughing. And hopefully none. Hopefully well, none. Well, I know we've got that situated. <laughs> I'm just going to drop this in my room. Picks up the keg again. All right. She slides over four keys. You tell him this up in kind of an attitude. Bitch, you know, the chosen. And make shit more she couldn't dream of. So I don't call me a nerd. You are a nerd. Yeah, but I'm a cool nerd. Stop, 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 stop up the stairs. He just Maybe he can build some stuff. relationship foundations with that one colorful fellow in his, you know, whatever. You get the crashing of armor on the stairs. <laughs> Don't just destroy fall. my stairs! Did you just fall? That's awfully nerdy of you. No! Scurrying sounds. <laughs> As he doesn't get up, he just all, on all fours continues the way up. See, that's what I was talking about. I'm the best. <laughs> Alright, let's let's warp over to Fractal. See what, he... what is Fractal doing? You got to a scene where there are many, many dead scientists. I'm cackling on top of a flaming green pile, and then I I, I click out of out of my uh, like daydream face, like ah, all right, uh, snap back to. <laughs> Do you have fun just committing genocide? There is nothing fun over what should just be. You but I do words, get a bit of enjoyment out of this. Anyway. So what uh, are you actually doing in the library? What am I doing? Uh, well, now that I have gotten most of, like, looking over my own schematics of my system, as well as my, my own head and whatever, 
Bellum has poked at and uh, given his notes on. Right. I will. For one thing, uh, I did get the uh, nonsense for the. I I did actually see there it is. I did already pay for the uh, the stuff for the ley lines. Um. I would like to see what I can do with my uh, bag of manticore spikes and a uh, vial of coatal spit. Okay. Um, see if there, uh, see if there's like some sort of zoology or something magical creatures department that might have interest in this. Might be able to tell me something. I'll pay, I'll pay me for it. Seems right. it's a celestial. It's a it's a celestial. Damn it! <laughs> now that's a better idea. That's a more specific thing that I can go off of. Uh, yeah. gathering from what Bellum told you about him going to watch a botany class, you're going, oh, that Hall of the Arcane is probably a college. There would probably be, like, uh, some sort of, like, magical creatures yes. department over there. Which Their entire system is... Yes, they would. Their entire uh, system is situated off of draining these poor children of their self-esteem and their money. Surely I, I could get in on this. Damn. Okay. Looks like college student. <laughs> so <laughs> plural. <laughs> I play D and D for escapism. <laughs> Don't bring me back. So Got one more month of freedom. So you go over to the college. What are you looking for? You're looking for some sort of someone that see might if buy there is the... some sort of uh, uh, either buy or give me so, so something interesting I can do with it because I have a manticore spikes uh, I was told I had a large bag that's all I had uh, I and a you. vial of koala spit right, I believe Sutha would have followed him out right well no the that y'all is... were uh, away from I'm alone right now that is true I know this but would he fault. have to go through the lobby no you I think the lobby the, way the way library way. yeah but you guys are all in the inn no, Sutha. Sutha Sutha's there. Sutha. Sutha. Oh. Yeah, oh. Sutha stayed. I guess you, you, yeah. you'd see me then, yeah. <laughs> All right, she'll fall along beside him. Ah! Oh, hello, Sutha. Did you acquire what you needed? Mm, something like that. Mm. Okay, well, where, where's uh, next? That's... Uh... See if there's something interesting I can do with these, and I hold I hold a file with a slightly glowing spit, uh, uh, as well as some mantor spikes. Worst case, I just give these to Kagas to glue to his armor. He, he seemed like he'd like that. Yeah, he would. He would. So you or head, to you make your way over to the Hall of the Arcane. Yeah, see if they have some sort of like zoology or. Extra monster class, magical monsters, something like, they like, do like that. They have a zoology department, but you gather based on how these things would be working, you would probably want to go to either alchemy or biology. Go to alchemy. All right. I'm 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 a large walking flame walking into a bunch of uh, interesting chemicals. Let's do this. <laughs> Shuggle boom boom boom. <laughs> Give me a moment. You said you're going to alchemy? Yes. Alright. Why does that look wrong? Oh no, it looks fine. I was just looking at the wrong thing. Yep. Uh, so uh, you find in the directory basically just saying like the alchemy is uh, Professor Kovrea. Yes. Uh, the head of the alchemy department. So you make your way over to the directory that leads you to their office. You make your way over. Uh, the Office has a, the door is, uh, closed, but there's a sign on there written in flowing script that says, uh, please knock. Ting, 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 ting. Uh, yes. Who is uh, uh, a flaming skeleton, hello. I am oh. Are you a new student here? Uh, you see no. a female satyr sitting at her desk, hooves oh, this, crossed oh, up on the woman. desk, lounging back. 
This poor woman. I'm about to ruin her vibe. Uh, no. Then I am, uh, how you say, in... I was, uh... I'm a... What's it? Attaché to uh, a... Some sort of researcher who's here visiting. Uh... I did have a side project that I was wondering had some alchemical institutions as it is a from a rare earth creature. Okay. From a creature? What are they? Yes. A, a celestial uh, quaddle. Okay. What did you get from it? Spit. <laughs> and you're looking to... I am mostly research purpose. I'm, I'm curious what it does and if uh, it is of any use to me as a mechanical creature. Okay. She fli like flips her legs off, and so she's now sitting normally at the desk, leaning forward onto her hands. Uh, well, Coatles, yes, a celestial being. Uh, if you have their saliva... Yes. Uh, and uh, we, it can be alchemically enchanted to create a poison. Intriguing. What's Kawada Poison do again? Uh, what Kawada Poison does is uh, you can coat one slashing or piercing weapon or up to three pieces of ammunition. Uh, mm -hmm. And any medium or smaller creature successfully hit must make a DC 13 constitution saving throw or become poisoned for 24 hours. Until this poison ends, the target is unconscious. A creature automatically wakes up if they receive damage or if an adjacent creature spends their action to wake them up. The poison does not work on undead or construct or any creature with poison immunity. I see. Pretty good one. Are you sure I can't just, like... It, would it work the same if it was imbibed? Uh... Not really. It's more of a bloodstream thing than a digestion thing. Also, if it's right. unrefined, it's not really going to do anything except maybe give you a stomach ache. Or, not you, but someone with a stomach. I see. Uh, would you like to buy this? Uh, hmm. it, 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 it has no biological use to, to me, as I am a uh, more of an uh, arcane sword and a little sparks come out of my staff. Be good for my class, maybe. Twenty gold. Sure. All right. She takes it from you and pays you twenty gold. Can't wait to grab a thousand gold off the next bandit. You might college student. They dropped two hundred gold pieces. Uh, I sent that. To, I sent that to see if she's lowball. I sent that to see if she's lowballing. Oh, I know. I was gonna DM you. Uh, okay. I'll I'll tell you after he he does both of them. Okay. Yeah. yeah Unless on. you would say something during the thing. I guess since I already said it, uh, is she lowballing him? Would if if she's lowballing, would you say something? Yes. Uh. Yes, she is. You know it's much worth much more than that. Not that much more. Besides, he already agreed. Still no. It has no use to him. I think Kaga is in here. The actual <laughs> refined potion is worth a great deal more, but this, as it is, is not that far away from being worth 20 gold. Listen, mm. I'm on a teacher's salary. That's what I have. Yeah. Oh, and again. If you have no problem with it, I will go wherever you lead. Right. Uh. All right. Goodbye. All right. Good bit. Quick question, uh, ma'am. Yes. What do you know about the artifact that was stolen from the ruins of Plata? Cultist. Do you know anything about that? I don't get into that. I don't trouble myself with it. Uh, 
I would talk to the archaeology professor, Professor Rockhorn. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Right then. Uh, Fre Fre Freckle did did didn't stop walking away. <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> hurry along get to get behind him. Uh, large bag of mental spikes. Eh, I'll I'll just give them to uh, Caucus. All right. Yeah, those or weren't something. worth as much anyway, so. Meh. Let's see here. I guess it's time to go for a walk. So, uh, you, go, you don't have to worry about me. You can head back to the others. True. Go on. True. <laughs> <clears throat> Why can I tell he, he hasn't left? Or she hasn't left? I don't know. Just just standing there menacingly. Says you're standing at there menacingly. Like, you know that's not gonna you know that's not gonna happen. Why can't I have a long time? I have needs. <laughs> you're a mechanical being, you do not have needs. Okay, just because that's true doesn't mean it has, doesn't hurt more. <laughs> <laughs> except, I, except I can't feel hurt. <laughs> Technically, literally, you don't. You wouldn't happen to have that tracking spell uh, 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 prepared today, would you? Silence. <laughs> <laughs> she just. She just smiles at you. This is bullshit. Can't even. I can do nothing. You eat. I got crackle. Whatever it is you wish to do, I will follow you. I want to go for a moonlit walk alone. <laughs> Moon ain't out. We're in an unknown city. Who knows what could happen? Who knows what eyes may be watching? I could have fun. And someone could have all of you, tearing you bit by bit. Yeah, I'm gone. If something is capable of killing me that fast without me taking out a city block, they deserve to kill me. <laughs> Assassin Rogue laughs. <laughs> if he wanted to kill me, he'd, he'd have picked a better time to kill me. <laughs> Alright, well, let's just go about your business. Uh, uh, Bye. Uh... I already picked up my regions. I got rid of that weird spit. Uh, I haven't mocked Kagas today in, in, in orc speak. That's something that needs to be done. Uh, ooh, I angry hey. Yes. Uh, what else can we do? Oh, I know. Da, 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 da. Let's scroll down the list. Hmm. Uh, that's pr uh, all I can really th think of when I'm with Sutha. So I guess we'll head back then. Finding more supplies, need more ingredients, anything we need to need to do because I'm pretty sure the shops will be up here soon. Nothing you need to worry about. Fair enough. Uh, hey, I don't, I don't know how you want to roll this, Liv, but I do eventually just try to, to lose Sutha. Okay. Um. Alright, I think I know how this is going to work. I think I have a, <laughs> a good idea of how I can make this work and make everyone happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In order to do this, I'm going to flash back to Ned, Bellum, and Kagaz back at the inn. What are you all doing? 
after he gets his key, he's just going to put the keg in his room and then wait back downstairs because Ned went to do other stuff. Yeah, Bellum is like it's kind of angry, angry fiddling for a bit, and he decides, yeah, yeah I can just sit on my arcane tinkering to little strobe lights and I'll have a party by myself. Then realizes how sad that is 30 seconds in and turns them off and goes to join him downstairs. <laughs> Ned wanted to head out and try and find information on the missing blacksmith. Okay. I will start with Ned. Or no, Kagas. Damn, Kagas. I'm going to start with Kagas. Because that's how I'm going to tie all of these loose ends together. Uh, this finger, I gotta be right back. That's fine. So, Kagas. Yeah. I'm going to make it work. I'm going to pull it all together. I'm going to make it work. As you are sitting, are you sitting like at the bar, at a table? I guess at the bar. Just at the bar. Uh, the, the dwarven patron of the inn is just kind of, she pays you enough attention as she does any of the other patrons that are just kind of there vibing. Um, Make me a perception check. All right. Perception. Uh, you see, and you've noticed this a couple of times, uh, there is what appears to be a man sitting in the corner who keeps glaring at you. Oh, great. I don't have got a beat up. Well, I ain't caused much trouble in this city yet. Suppose now's the time. Stands up, turns, walks over to him. What get? Got some this, eh? Yeah, I do. Your well, spit yeah. Your behavior earlier today was unacceptable. What kind of a man are you? <laughs> I'm Kage's Iron John. I do whatever the fuck I want. Which behavior are you talking about? I've done a handful of things already. Mainly, the way you spoke to the patroness. It's appalling. What? A stunty? Yeah, she can take it. If a dwarf couldn't take that, then might as well shave her damn beard off. Alright, that's enough. What are you gonna do about it? As you ask that, uh, this six foot two ginger man stands up and uh, you notice uh, on his back a, a greatsword. <laughs> we taking this outside? I think we are. Oh, that's great. I don't want to destroy all your furniture, pointing to the dwarf. Let's go, then. Crunches his knuckles. <laughs> Since I think this is pretty much just going to be uh, essentially a park and bark fight. I don't know if there's going to be too much maneuvering. I'm just going to have you guys do it on the map here because distance doesn't matter that much. Does does Ned notice this happening? Oh, absolutely. They're not. Ned will stuff. follow them out. Oh, shit. Two in the chat. I told you, I'm fucking freeze going to come in my new. Oh, 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 Ned's joining. Halfling. 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 <laughs> Halfling. Wait a minute. Wait Jeez. a minute. Fucking Christ. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh my god. Wait a minute. We've seen this one, folks. I remember that. Isn't that Bob Line? The yeah, good one? It is. Goddamn right. You, you, uh, 100% is. All right, tough guy. And Ned will say to Kagas, don't kill him. I'm civil enough. You figured that out by now, right? I mean, I could talk to people. I'm better than a standard orc. Your interpretation of civil. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and kick this off. What is, what, why are there two of them? What is this? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I have to worry about it. I'm running him. Okay. Uh, 
Bobaline is going to start off with uh, two big great sword swings at you, Kagaz. Here's number one. Oof. Here's number two. Oh. Oof again. That's his turn. He's just going to. Come on. What damage. a champion he is. Yes. Interesting, isn't it? Ah, that is some good licks. Ned, do you want to do anything? Uh, Ned's going to position himself in a uh, position to become hidden from uh, Bobaline. You know what you're doing with Bobaline, right? Because uh, I still have hatred for that asshole. <laughs> Which one? All of them. <laughs> listen. <sighs> listen. What a well, nah. Nah. Who doesn't need a hatred for, let's be honest? It's Go for some it's... good licks! Oh, right. He hates when I use. Never mind. <laughs> there you go, on it, B. I'm gonna fall you in then. Let's go. <laughs> Big man mode. Big man mode. Do it. Damn, I'm not blessed. Uh. 14's gonna fucking whiff. Uh, yeah, it does. That misses. Another one. 20 will hit. All right, so 22. Strength save. Strength save. DC is 15. I think that's a success. Yes, it is. It still takes 2d6, though. Of course. Oh, my. Two's in the chat. Beautiful. Ha. Beautiful. Hey. All of two, but... Close up. The numerology goes all the way down. All right. It is Bob Alliance's yeah. turn again. He is gonna. He's gonna try a great, a great weapon master strike at you. Why not? All right. No. Back to regular. You're both too. He's that kind of thing against me. Yeah, you're too heavily armored for it. No, that's gonna miss. So wing and a miss. That's his turn. You came in strong, and you're throwing it out the window. Ned doing anything? Ned. Uh, at the moment, no. Um, he'll sneak up behind Bobaline, and if it looks like he's about to uh, deal a uh, fatal blow to Kagaz, he will act. All right, fair enough. I'll just consider that a perpetually held action. Ah. Womp. Okay, yeah, 20 definitely hits. All right, that's, that's good. 20. 20 damage. Nice. Womp. 17 just hits. How's he looking right now? Oh, he's looking pretty rough. <clears throat> With that second hit, yeah, he's reeling back from it. Call the witch! Oh. Using Call of the Thunder. Oh, it's a con save. Just you need a better it. mic for when you're playing, Kagaz. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I have to do this. I have to do this. Let me, let me hit, let me hit you with it. Please. Turn off noise suppression. Do it. <laughs> there you go. We actually can hear everything. That was beautiful. <laughs> I was kind of hoping nice. it was going to be a yard, but the wall was also beautiful. All right, con Oh, God, save. I can't imagine a yard like that. My, I think my vision was He takes the full damage, but if he fails the con save, he gets stunned. Uh... <laughs> and no, I'm not trying to kill him with it. No, he's unconscious. Knocked him the fuck out, bro. Knocked him the Boom. fuck out, bro. Walks up to him, rubs his chest plate a little bit. Yeah, that is with some good looks. I'll give him that. Picks him up. Snaps in front of his face. Oi. Wake up. He he wakes up after a few minutes. If you're not doing anything else to him, he'll eventually, like, stabilize and wake back up. All right. I am a bit out of practice with this, clearly. No, what you just picked up I was a full-blooded orc. Yeah, you what picked the hell your orc. And Sutha appears. Uh, I was uh, just making sure Kagaz didn't die. Did I escape? Oh. <laughs> well, I'm kind of torn. Did. 
One, you thought I might yes. lose, and two, you're worried about me. So I guess it evens out. Oh, what, what, the the hell are you doing here? Uh, what the hell are you doing here? What? What? Wait. What? Yeah, it is... uh, Hold on, hold that on. wasn't directed at us. Yeah. A cock well, you know this Sutha her prize. <laughs> he kind of just kind of like lifts him up and like, wait, you know this guy or something? So, what over to him? Yeah, I'm going to go over to him. Help him up. Not who's up, but yeah, she'll. Hey, Sutha. There was a Warforged the entire time. Yeah, I like beat up your boyfriend or something. I mean, I have to get better somehow. I have to try and improve somehow. Clearly, not You really not. wanted to jump to the end of the line on that one, huh? <laughs> kind of. Kai guys will shrink back to normal. I know you've talked about joining orc war bands, but you really need to get that dream out of your head. Bob. Uh. Boy, you wanted to try to join a bunch of orcs. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of funny. Where else am well, I gonna learn that kind of warfare? It's not gonna. Let me let me try to clear this up. So you wanted to join orcs, <laughs> and you called me out for my conduct, as if <laughs> they're not much worse. You're crazy. I've heard that once or twice. Yeah. Good sir. Uh, I already forgot your name. This is uh, Kogaz. He is quite possibly the best behaved orc on the planet. That's because I'm the smartest orc on the planet. Probably. And you were upset with his conduct. He was rude. Yeah. Yeah. Any other orcs a lot worse than that. Any other orc walks into that bar, sees our lady practitioner, they would kill her or attempt to. Or put her on a stake and like dance around her. Other one. A lot of what dad works. And do you want to join an orc war band? No one does Looks at Sutha. He's got a lot of stupid in him, doesn't he? While I agree with that about orcs doing war different, most of the time they do it wrong. They're what? berserk. But they go to she's town. Like oh, continue, Shane. Sorry, my oh. bad. I didn't mean to cut oh, you off. It's good. There you go, berserk. They're great fighters, but they ain't got brains. They ain't got strategy. They kind of just run into it until one of them's dead. Either they die or the thing they're running into dies. While in a number of sense, that works most of the time. Anyone with some sort of brain that knows they're coming, they easily deal with most of them. He's holding his head. Oh, that's... I, I lost track of Fractal because I heard. Oh yeah, Fractal is. You, as you're looking around, he, yeah, he, 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 Fractal's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Fractal, Fractal yeah. evaded he's, you. He's holding him. She's more focused on him right now. Yeah, she's more focused Get on him right work. now. She's gonna. Oh man. I made everybody happy. Yeah, she'll. <laughs> she'll walk with him inside, holding his side, try to care of him. I'm fine. Oh, what the hell? Turns to Ned. Stupid dream. And Turns to Ned. <laughs> I guess I need to get hurt more. Where's that kind of treatment? <laughs> I could help you with it. Gives him the rock eyebrow. Mm. I'm quite tempted. <laughs> All I feel like she's just going to watch me bleed if you do it. Wrong possibility. Oh, well. Let's go find this damn blacksmith. Yep. Wanky, you staying with them or coming with us? Bellum. 
having been just listening from oh, the window. Oh, yeah, so. you absolutely could have poked your head out of the window. It just leans forward. Yeah. I guess I'll come and vi- join. I didn't want to intrude. Uh, is it, could he jump out of this window or would that be dumb? It's like a second uh, story. You no, know. it's like a second story. Should be fine. Do do it, Bellum. Do it. Just go ahead. And you do know, it. I'm gonna. Come right on down. I'll While catch you. Exactly. You'll hear Bellum in his full plate mail run and jump and say, "Call gas, catch me." <laughs> and in slow mo, Bellum Healers realizes. Adjust. Uh oh, <laughs> I'm adjust. already heavy. <laughs> it was adjust, Norman. <laughs> just he's doing all the equations of all the force that's about to hit Cogas. He's like. He can probably take it. Sure. Kage said it's mine. I can probably take it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do we do ah! anything, God? Oh. Uh, mm. Or would it be a save? It's going to be the same I, number. Um, if you want to roll it as a save, you can. If you want to try I'll, I, Athletics would work as well, though, since you're trying to catch him. Up to you. I rolled anything? Uh, you're kind of just jumping. Yeah, you're kind of just jumping. Roll me a basic dexterity check to see how well you can aim yourself. <laughs> okay. It's not it's not terrible. But first. You each take seven bludgeoning damage. <clears throat> I can only imagine the sound of a gong going off as our two plate armors clash. Oh, <laughs> it is deafening in the streets. I have my temp HP gets eaten. How guys just starfished out in the fucking ground. Yep. You know, that kind of felt like that gray sword a minute ago. Bellum gets up. I didn't think that one through. Cops is standing together, gets five temp HP back. Well, you get an A for trying. Gets up. I wanted to break the mold and prove I wasn't a lame nerd. Hey, I didn't ever say you were a lame nerd. I just said you're a nerd. <laughs> Did you say I'm a cool nerd? Now let's not get too far. <laughs> you throw down in the front with me, but you're still a nerd. So it bounces out. I bet I could take you. <laughs> you want to say that again? Oh, I'm sorry. That was out loud. <clears throat> <laughs> Let me just, do I, I don't think I need to roll this one to GM live. I don't think you do. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's a lie. It's a it, lie. it's it's specifically he's like a with enough time you can beat anybody, but he's not. He's seen the shit you've done. He's like, I don't really want to. I don't want to really. <laughs> my that my armor is quote impenetrable. Um, I'd like I'd like to keep him breathing. Bella, make me make me a wisdom check real quick. Good. No wisdom. Seven. I ain't low whiz. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. I know it's gonna. Happen. I ain't low everything. Nothing happens right now. Oh, good. Well, for having the balls to say that, I won't punch you in the face. <laughs> Let's go find this blacksmith. About seven minutes into your travels, looking for the blacksmith, Bellum, it dawns on you that when you said, "I think I could take you." To Kagaz, that definitely sounded like you could have meant it in another way. Amazing. But you don't realize that until seven minutes later. That tracks. And then you go, oh no. Um, oh, that dwarf wasn't listening. Exactly. I imagine she just had a window crack and she's like, I think they lied to me. <laughs> I, I love if she hears these... that, she's going... The Furbolg is very disappointed that he's not actually with the orc. <laughs> the Furbolg really wants the orc that is so far out of his league. Now, poor little. The funny Furbolg. thing here is ha- half of these little wisdom moments for Bell, they're not even me playing them. It's just Connor saying things, and then they come out that way. Oh yeah, that's why I had you roll the wisdom check was just to see how. It, that's it, your yeah. stats in real life. Yeah, like when you said that, I was like, <laughs> oh god, this is gonna be one of those Connor's gonna. Have no idea what I didn't do here. <laughs> All right, um, so there's three groups now: the Blacksmith now. Company, uh, Bob Alliance Recovery Phase, and uh, <laughs> Fractal looking oh, for victims. Right. Fractal. 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 
after you, uh, you and Sutha, as you were trying to lose your tail, uh, as you came upon the fight between Kagaz and Bobaline, and Sutha kind of tried to break it up, you went, aha, now's my chance. And you split away. Well, Where'd you first go? First, let me just uh, change my name real quick. There we go. Oh, God. You don't mean Grifter, do you? Grafter. Uh, no, 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 I do not. Want to explain no. yourself, son? <laughs> Arms. Also, my phone heard me, and now I keep getting pictures of Lamias. Yeah! Of what? Lamias. <laughs> snake oh, ladies. Uh-huh. And it's all out of fucking Monster Girl Encyclopedia. Oh, of course. Yeah. Big titties. Well, or, so. or not. I... <laughs> given I, I know eventually Sutha can and will track me down, I. Fractal's had a long standing confusion. He needs a uh, regular control on. These. Chuckle fucks have been the basis of him interacting with other people for a while. So he's going to go and just, you know, quote unquote mingle and possibly scare the uh, shit out of people and or get information and just he- he- hear things. I don't know. He wants to experience other people as a baseline to compare, just see these guys are insane or whether he's just that out of touch. Okay. So you're. <laughs> trying to get like a social scene yes you you can do that uh, either just like he fades to black and then some shit happens or because he just wandering in see like 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 oh, uh taverns or some shit something interesting happening could be a mugging where just like he's gonna walk cavalier into it i don't know <laughs> hmm. he just wants to blunder I- I- into situations now that he okay. doesn't have a wa- uh he doesn't have a watchdog on him Probably a lot of it would be happening either in the residential district or the merchant district. Pick one. Mer- merchant has a uh, higher market of fuckery, so I'm going to head toward the residential. Residential? Okay. Yeah, I'm going um, more for people. <laughs> definitely more people. Uh, you see uh, there are some people that are, like, sitting out on there but you know the, the it's that you're 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 from the south it's that thing where people sit out on their porch or in their driveway and people just come by and yeah. chat with them and they stay for like four hours mm-hmm. there's a lot of that happening um, and now a flaming mouse skill just going for a stroll with a, uh, with this cane staff <laughs> Uh, if you stop and watch any of them for any sort of, like, a few minutes or longer, they do comment on you. But it's all mm-hmm. along the lines of, like, oh, man, those wizard school kids are getting really creative with some of their final projects. That's 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 very lifelike. That's incredible. Mm-hmm. What skill. Mm-hmm. He won't react to that as much. He's just analyzing people just being chummy with each other, especially he's uh, confused after the uh, comments from Bellum about about his uh, noodle. Saying, uh, and he starts to think, well, I shouldn't be comic on it, but, that, but I found that annoying. Right. That, that they, they think I'm some art, uh, some art, art project. So there are things but that I you grasp about, that. like, you see some conversations you come up on, like, as they're beginning and some as they're ending. Uh, and some in the middle, and so you grasp the concept, basically, of, um, like, the pleasantries that happen in the beginning of a conversation, like, basic just, oh, how mm. have you been, checking up on past events that you know or, or that you gather were important to one person or the other, asking about family members or a job, um, different things like that before they delve into what they're actually wanting to talk about. And the back and forth that happens between that, if one person has something that they're talking about, they'll talk about it for a while and then it passes to another person. And then the basic pleasantries with the, there's a lot of knee slapping and, well, I better be going. And then the conversation will go on for another hour. Um, I this. You don't quite understand this. You gather that the knee slap is an indicator of this person wants to leave. And yet somehow... 
it's almost like a cyclical whirlpool kind of thing where they just get sucked back into the conversation and then they're like actively invested and they don't want to leave and they're continuing the conversation. Oh, inefficient. It is very inefficient. So uh, from from like the porch side conversations, those are the kind of things that you glean about those kinds of interactions. Uh, you pass by like a park area sort of over here where there's some kids playing. Uh, you see a couple of them playing with like wooden swords. They're playing some sort of like pirates or knights or soldiers or something like that. And they're play fighting with the swords. They're committing violence trips, but they're smiling. You also, something you notice that's, that, uh, that strikes you as interesting. They are, even though you as a combatant, even though you're not really a physical combatant, you know enough about it to understand how it works. Even though there are clear openings in these children's fighting stances, they never actually attack each other. They just continue to have their swords make contact. Clack. Inferior clack, material. Clack. Why aren't they attacking each other? <sighs> Bless you some there. Distinct lack of Perhaps ability. it's just sparring. Maybe they're just trying to get the feel of how these weapons work. I could make them better. But why should I? I shouldn't want them to be better. They are inefficient in materials. A problem. <sighs> you notice also as you're at the park, some children running around, and one of them, uh, a very young child, probably two or three, uh, is kind of toddling around, and slips and falls and scrapes their knee. Uh, they start crying. You see their mom come over and bundle them up into a hug and pick them up and kind of kiss the kiss the knee better. Creator instincts. You almost Preset feel pro melancholy <sighs> watching that. There's almost a longing that you don't quite understand. He turns. Let's see here. Well, yeah, we've gone over. We've gone over. A very faded grayish, but almost grayed out pink. Aw, he's blushing. No. <laughs> Denied. That's like hyper pink. <laughs> this one's like a very faded, like. Sun scorched pink. <laughs> this might have been a bad idea. I do not like this feeling. It is. It is. Why are they so quantified? Quanti this is bad. And he's an old pock on. With a tinge of red at, a, at the edge of the pink now, as it fades back to green. Okay. And uh, he just goes out. You can cut this off whenever you want. He's just going for a okay, stroll so and I'm just. I'm trying to think of like what kind of social interaction, emotion. He's got he casual with. happiness, melancholy. You've gotten like. Children playing like, and like just, sadness. just doing things for fun. Um, the general pleasantries of like how to hold a conversation with normal people. It seems to be like the same enjoyment I get at the bottom of the podcast, but more <laughs> less it is malice. Very similar to that. Why do I enjoy that? It is of no. Occurrence that I, I gain nothing from bothering you. But As there's a bit of the sun is starting to set at this point. I'm a I I I, I pay no heed to it. He he has like a little journal out that he's just 
constantly like scratching in. Oh. Damn. What? Furious note taking. Bye, Shane. Go, Shane. <laughs> the man's gone. Here he wants us. Yeah, we heard. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that sounded exactly like that bit in the in the like spy movie where the hacker finishes the last line of code, grabs the thumb drive, and goes to run into the secret. I'm in. Like, fuck. They got to oh. put put this thumb drive in. This is exactly what he came back. Welcome back, Shen. Yes. We heard it. noise suppression is still off. Good yeah, noise suppression be like. <laughs> oh, that's fair. That's a good point. Yeah. So, yeah, you can cut it off whenever you want. I, I, Fractal, unless he, he wanders into something he shouldn't on accident, that that's pretty much just, just what he's doing. No, there's nobody here stupid enough to do that in public. Wizards yeah. everywhere. Yeah. No one risking yeah. that shit. Not in the residential district, at least. Mm -hmm. uh, so Another eventually, you, you gather the information that you're looking for. There's not anything that you were specifically looking for that you missed. Uh, I will say that. So if there's something I didn't describe that you were looking for, you do find it, or at least get mm -hmm. some sort of idea of it. Uh, the only correlation... Hmm. Go ahead. Uh, uh, he's pretty much writing in his journal, but the only correlation to him and what shouldn't be there is that particular incident, the things that are, that are embedded in him. That's okay. the only thing he can possibly find in these alien things. As you're pondering that, your feet do eventually carry you back to the Laughing Lamia. Uh, where we will cut to Sutha Thank and you. Bobbeline. What are you doing here? Why'd you get into a fight with Kagas? I know that orcs are very battle-focused. I thought maybe if I could prove myself to one in battle... It would mean something. I don't know. You're not an orc, Bob. Okay, and? Why would you do something so stupid? You go so many other paths. Why this one? It's all I've ever really wanted. I know, I know, kids. Ugh. All you ever talked about. Dreamed about it. Yeah. Uh, as a size. I'm sorry. How have you been? It's great seeing you. Uh, she genuinely has a huge smile on her face. Probably the first time actually seeing her have a genuine smile. Aww. But the other party's not there, yeah. which is a damn shame. <laughs> Wanted to get some alone country. time. He thought he thought that was your boyfriend. This is how to guys. It's the first thing you said. <laughs> So he wanted to give you guys some alone time. <laughs> oh, I've been good. Just traveling, trying to get stronger. I had no clue you were here. That was good luck, wasn't it? Very. <laughs> yeah, Kagas, you do have a sinking, sinking feeling in your stomach. Something is going on with Sutha and you're not there to watch it. I feel that I'm missing something important. Nah, did I forget something? I thought I know of. Damn. So I left a long time. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Who are these people uh, you're deep. traveling with, Sutha? Well, the orc. The idiot. Oh. That is Kyle, guys. I don't know Show if I'd call him an idiot. In other words, yes, he He's quite intelligent. The short one is Ned Black. He is uh, probably one of the stealthiest and most inquisitive types you will ever meet. Both are very good fighters, very, very good. Um, there are two others. There's Upper Bolg, the smartest people I've ever met. And then there's Fractal. Like a fractal. Fractals 
um, she has like a genuine look of concern about how much she wants to load on bubble line. <laughs> you can tell me. I won't break, you know. Like in a far back corner, I assume, of the tavern, way away from most of the other patrons, I assume, yeah. Yeah. I was called to find Fractal. He's a very unique individual. Okay. Because after... So I left to try and find my parents. I ran into him. I was told that he would help me find him. That's why I'm here, because I'm following him. He will lead me to find him, though. All right. Do you know anything else about what that means? Possibly we're trying to uncover more information. We're thinking they're currently looking into researching ley lines and stuff. That's why we're here. Maybe potentially there might be coincidence or Things may be connected. Might lead us more clues. Let's find the cult of the Risden. Oh. That's not good. I am surprised you're here, though, because last I heard, you were wanting to get married. Uh... I needed to do this. I still want to get married, but... And you just left Naivara just behind? I assume you told her why you were leaving? I told her. She deserved that much. She didn't say she'd wait, but... She didn't say she wouldn't. I don't know. Made me sneeze. Bless you. Bless you. How rude, Kagas. <laughs> anyway, um, the others I'm sure will be back soon. Uh, they can tell you more. You can get to know them a little bit better, but I gotta tell you, please stop. I'm just gonna give you. 100% the honest what I'm feeling. You need to quit. Stop trying to join an orc caravan or, or group. And go back. I can't promise that. Why not, you stupid son of a... It's... <laughs> I'm not going to give it up. She's gonna punch him in the face. He takes it. Ow. Uh, you have a mil you have a million dollar body, but a ten cent brain. Jesus Christ. What? Never mind. <laughs> Maybe he is an orc. <laughs> I think I've seen this intro before. <laughs> anyway, I'll tell you more about last time you saw, and we can just kind of like pan the camera out as they're talk talking. They're going to order some drinks. We can go to the next one. They're just going to have some polite conversation, waiting until the rest come back. Yeah. So, Ned and Kagas, what are you doing? And Bellum. And Bellum, what are you doing? Uh, on the walk over, just kind of. Fiddling with the arcane tinkerings from his little one-man party, disabling him, disassembling. For starters. 
Oh my. Lovely. All right. Does dog ass still look hurt? Yeah. He got slashed twice and then you fell on him. So yeah, he's taking some damage. Take 10 more hit points. That puts me at 54 out of 66. Not bad. Good enough. His bell will reach up. This may be the first time you've ever seen him uh, cast Cure Wounds. And he does it from behind you because he doesn't know if you'll accept an offer. Uh, so he's just kind of. Here you go. Turns around. Uh, what was that? I guess. Miles. Dog ass. Bellum's doing you from behind. <laughs> <laughs> is this is this just the tone it's going to be for the rest of the night? This is just uh, unavoidable? Should I just have to accept this now? Probably. Well, the further it goes, the more liable I am to use Ned like a baseball. That would be funny to see. I, I would probably pay a gold to watch you punch him. You think I could get him over the wall? Pens, do you get a 10-foot running start? Probably. You're welcome yeah. to try, big man. Oh, no, I'm saying that. he's joking. He forgets that Targas might actually try this if, he, if I keep begging him on. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, before I make a halfway disappear, let's find a one who did disappear. Uh, what, how are we going to do that? Did you all find his last known location? No. That's, nope. That's what we're going to go do, though. Go ahead and make me an investigation check to try and your... sneak around, see what you can sniff out. Ned, what's your investigation? Plus nine. Uh, I guess it's yours. Quick... Oh, what do you think it's One good? with no proficiency. So if you have proficiency, give him advantage. Yeah, I'll help you, Ned. And, oh, yeah, and guidance. Yeah, allow me. I think that's good, but just a little extra on top. Yeah. yeah. Too. Oh, yeah. Uh, Kaga is going to be looking for something else. Not very successful. Yeah, Kaga, whatever it is you're looking for, you've forgotten what it was. Uh, Ned, you... Let me see. How do I want to give you this information? Uh, you are actually stopped, or not stopped, but you run into the uh, the same tabaxi that you had found earlier. Okay. Hello, good friend. Ah, it is good to see you again. Yeah, <clears throat> we'll give him a heavy handshake. He's going to slap 10 gold into his hand this time around. Uh, what can I help you with? Looking for a blacksmith. Apparently hard to find. The missing one, yes. I have heard about him. The last thing I heard is that he was trying to find some sort of uh, rare ore or mineral deposit or something uh, between here and the lake. He hasn't been seen since. You know what kind of ore that was? Believe it was, uh... Oh, it was one of the really rare ones, like uh, Demantine or Mithril, something like that. He wasn't entirely sure what it was, but he said it was a big find, if it was real. Well, looks like I got a good direction to go looking now. Definitely east between here and the lake. Yep. Thank you for your time again. You're welcome, oh, but uh, be careful. I saw the man before he disappeared. The man was fucking jacked. Whatever caused him not to come back is a heavy hitter. Point at Kogas. I'm taking that with me. Good call. I'll be fine. All right. I think we... Uh, you wouldn't, by any chance, know any more of what material he's looking for? It might help us track down, based on its composition and places it originates, might help narrow down where he ended up. All I know is that it's rare. Alright. It means expensive. Expensive means basically anything could have tried to kill him at this point. Can Bell like one or two bandit groups. Can Bell make a nature check to figure out 
in his head, he's got a, a series of Venn diagrams. He's got one circle is expensive materials, one's materials native to the area, one's things that are magical. Like he's trying to find all these different What's circles right the factors he's been told about. He's trying to find What's something there in that middle and trying to imagine yep. of those things, what are markers I can locate? Like uh, if an if it's an adamantine deposit, do the trees grow slightly differently? Is the grass greener or is it darker, etc. Stuff like that. Uh, and find markers to navigate us. Make a nature? nature's intelligence, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah make a nature yeah. check. Guidance. Uh, Shibuya. 27. Nice. nice. With a 27. Uh, let me give you some... I'm not going to give you like specifics because I don't know what those specifics would be but i'll give you a list of materials that you think might like pass the vibe check basically it, gotcha give Does me the material sense? list uh definitely adamantine uh would would kind of fit basically you're going off of okay this is the geography of the area it's between this city and a lake he he was he's a blacksmith so it's a mineral or an ore so that that's basically what you're going off of so uh, possibly adamantine, uh, dark steel, mithril. Okay. Um. Uh. Uh. uh firestone. On the way, I'll get my hands on it. I could smith something out of it. So, two reasons to go out there. Marlite, M A R L I T E. Okay. Necrotite. Interesting. Sounds like you have more. And uh, Valis, V A L L I S. V A L L I S. Now, can I ask what Marlite and Valis are? The others, I kind of get the vibe of. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to ask you to make me checks on these, because these are not things you've worked with before. Just Valis. to see if you've, like, read about them. Um, and say, it's, are you proficient with history? Uh, yes. Then actually. go ahead and make a history check. Guidance. 20, okay, 30. that's. I'll say that's for just doing it alphabetically. I'll say that's for Marlite. Um, it is a metal. It uh, it can be processed into a metal as hard and resilient as steel, but it is more valuable than steel because it is a magic dead material. So it cannot be affected by spells, magic items, or magical oh. abilities. Does it magic? Does it just dispel magic that hits it? And it just bounces off. Or it is just completely it? immune to magic. Oh. Ultimate bulwark of magic, duly noted. Sort of. Spells can still affect the wearer of an armor, but not the armor directly. So say you Will were they... up against, like, uh, a rust monster. It wouldn't be able to... The magical effect from the rust monster wouldn't be able to disenchant the armor. Hypothetical. You know how we have lead-lined glass in the real world? If you had Marlite line glass, would it stop spells going through it at all? I yeah, it would basically act as a barrier. So like Lovely. a sword a sword made of Marlite couldn't be affected by a spell designed to make it too hot to hold or turn it to <laughs> dust, and no one could pull it away with telekinesis. Something like that's, that's the vibe. Very, but, very interested in Marlite. But it also cannot be affected in beneficial ways either, so it cannot be enchanted at all. Oh, so it can never be a plus one, two, or three weapon or any of that no, stuff? No. Not at all. Interesting. And that would also mean that my, my infusions, I sure, sure wouldn't work Would on not that. work at all. Interesting. It would okay. waste the infusion slot. You would be trying to channel it, and it would just cancel out. The I other one you were asking about is just have to get a sample. To, yep, yep. Go ahead and make another history check for that one. Okay, once again, guiding himself. This is happening as we're walking. Felm has his uh, parchment sheath or er, ring him out. And he's doing his doodle notes. Uh, that one's a dirty 26. All right, so this one is All a right. stone. 
Uh, this can be used to fuel spells, magic items, and rituals. Uh, so oh. the dust of this stone can be used to create spell slots similar to using the stored energy in a rod of absorption. Oh. Um. At, but as the piece is used, it diminishes. Okay. Uh, so it's 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 sort of like a like a pearl of power, but like a one time use. Depending on the size, it d affects the level. Um. Something that's been dunked in magic, and you can wring it dry. Sort of. Once okay. this, with that high of a roll, you know that um, using a piece of unprepared valis stone would pose a real danger because once the stone is tapped, it leaks power out of it, so it loses one potential spell level of power per day as it sits unused. And that can cause certain uh, fatiguing effects in people that find themselves in too close of a contact on it. Interesting. Oh. And with my earlier nature check, those those are the list of things it could be. Does any do either one of the do any of those strike me as a thing that it could be more likely than the others, or is that list as specific as he? The stone is yeah. probably not as likely considering that it is uh, he is a blacksmith um, yeah. hmm. the necrotite is a bit of a, a bit of a lower chance the marlite is a good chance since it is an ore um, the firestone uh, would would be a good chance um The uh, adamantine and mithril would also end the dark the dark steel. He gathers up this list, and I'm assuming, not you said you didn't have you know the thing the features ready, but I assume he knows what the yeah environments for these would be like, and he knows more what's or less. Yeah, you'd be able okay. to. I mean, you know that like it's less of like they cause nature phenomenon and more of just you know how to identify the kind of vein it is when you see it. Gotcha. You know like so would he be able to spot out like the right when he gets across to the biome or region he'd be he would be able to identify what kind of ore would probably be in that area. I mean, so basically I've already done that. You know what kind of things would be in this area. Okay. Based on like the geography of what would kind of be here. That's what narrowed it down to begin with. This is more of just finding places that you would potentially mine for something, mine or quarry for something, and then identifying a vein or a load. Okay. Bellum uh, uh, confers called. this information to his uh, allies as they walk. Uh, and he does not have any spells prepared today that would help locate them, other than he does have enhanced ability that he can use if we need to, you know, give somebody a boost or split off and whatnot. Otherwise, uh, he will uh, also ask, uh, if we're, going, we're not going tonight, are we? Are you? Well, uh... Granted that I used some of my stuff on beating up Sutha's boyfriend. <laughs> Probably not. Because I was going to say, we should really make sure we have the whole group with us, just in case things do go sideways. You know, caves and all the like. <laughs> it's crickets, crickets, crickets. Every every moment you tick away from the cool nerd bit. Uh, I try not to. Pats him on the back. <laughs> this shit's why I go on a box. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Personality traits. I'm poor, like, horribly awkward in social situations. <laughs> it's adding up. And he will. Since they're tiring for that, he'll drop another cure wounds on you. 
that first level is as much as the second level one. Nice. More even. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, it was more. You should be a full rank ish. I'm one HP away. Yeah, hey, you're good. Yeah. And he will uh hmm. May I request just a quick little five minute thing? As I was looking over wanting to spend my spell slots before we go to bed tonight. I'd like to try something with. Sure. What would you like to try? I can't remember if I've done this yet. Oh wait, no, I think I actually did this with a different character. I have to cast Levitate on myself and just go up as high as he can. And just, like, city from above, look up at the stars. And... Okay, that was my next question. Are you outside? Uh, yes. Yeah. And just kind of... I th I don't think there's an upper limit he can go to. And it says when the spell ends, you gently float to the ground. He's still right. aloft. So he can do basically 10 minutes worth of 20 feet per round up. So that's... Yeah, you can what? get... A lot. Pretty high. He won't mm -hmm. get to the point where he's going to be like blown by strong winds to drift him right. away from the town, but like high enough to where he's above it all, and he's just kind of finding a space in the night sky, more or less, it's just sit and park for a minute. Uh, and the little the levitation for him, uh, he just kind of sparkles a little bit, and little motes that flash up on him every so often that look like stars continue to just coat him and they blink up and down and move all about uh, and they should mimic different constellations that exist in the world. Oh yeah. They do and it's beautiful. Uh, while he's having a little moment up there you want to do anything else Ned? No, let's just head back to the inn. Alright. Well, up there he is, he's going to make another prayer to Celestine. Since he hasn't spoken to him in a while. Hey, Celestian. Uh, still a little new to this whole prayer thing, but uh, it felt like the right environment. Just checking in. Everything's going good. Starting to pull a thread on what's really been going on at the Grove, despite not getting any answers there. Eye rolls. But. All's going well for now. I hope they know. I hope everything's all right back home. You get a feeling of reassurance. Kind of nods to the air. And it doesn't necessarily have his gravity doesn't really mean as much here. Uh, so he just kind of leans back as if he was like in a lawn chair or like a beach chair and just chills for the next 10 minutes or however long he has left in the sky until he starts to feel himself descend. And when he touches down, he'll go into the end, go to sleep. But until then, he just stares, stay, stays staring at the night sky, just watching everything happen. Sky, clouds drift, etc. Nice. Then he goes to bed. All right. Did anyone else want to do anything before they go to bed? Uh, I guess when we walk back in the inn, if Sutha and Bob Liner are still there, I'm going to stroll up to him. Drunk as shit. Drunk <laughs> as shit. Oh, well, I guess I didn't need to buy no keg. Oh, that's great. Oh, y'all are back. Yeah, we're, we're back. You went down to party route right without everyone else. Well, hey, y'all were, were busy. I've been telling Bob line about you guys. Tell them all the great things. You guys Boy. sound really good. Hold on. It's... It's kind of surprising. Is I didn't think anything we did was a, considered a great thing to you. I consider y'all good compatriots. Y'all have done many great things. Talking about us? Oh, by the way, I am here. <laughs> hey, Glacky. I went for a walk. It was it was nice. Glad we all had some sort of exercise today. 
minimal casualties. Minimal casualties. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, my soul's hurt right now. So I'm going to go, uh, go to bed. Oh, your soul's hurt? What's wrong? Maybe I could take a look at it. No. Wiggle singers. <laughs> Good night, Ned. Good night, Sutha. Good night, Sutha's boyfriend. Ned. Up to his room. What? He honestly thinks we're dating. <laughs> what? That is the phone. What are we doing? Hungover, step bro. What? Don't worry about it. He's a little Why man, but he's got a big heart. <laughs> anyway. So, uh, I already beat the tie out of you. So, who are you? My name's Bobbleline. I'm I got a head part. friend of Sutha's. Yeah, we go way back. All the way back. All way back. back. All Childhood way back. friends? Yep. Yeah. Air Fork. Get this cog. Get this cog. Come on, have a seat. She, she sits down next. She motions you to sit down next to him. Oh, I'm listening. This. He left the woman he was going to marry. I'm joining the Orc Band. So <laughs> laugh about it. It's not funny. You know, he did. it's fucking hilarious. So this is. Uh, have you ever mentioned Bobbleline to Fractal? Never came up. He didn't ask. That's a fair point. Good. All right. Uh. So what is this, by the way? And he kind of like like pokes Bobbleline in the in the mushy in the mushy bits. The, Good arm, he, the like mushy, arm. mushy bits? No, not that, you fucking degenerate. Like, uh, his muscle. <laughs> Some muscles? Let's go. A fine material you made up. Top class. Thanks, I think. What class am I, then? You're off limits. Top uh, plus. Your... I don't know, whatever's a Step or five of me. She leans into Kaga's ear. You are extra thick. She <laughs> is extra thick. That's true. I yeah. know, right? That's always what she used to say. I mean, the, the, the thing that sometimes uh, damages the dexterity-wise makes the uh, end result a bit less than, than what the uh, particular vocation needs. This this is good. This has got dexterity and muscle. Very good range. Very good uh, and good uh, end result. You like a balance. I have well, no balance it. right now, and he almost falls out of his chair. Let me help you. <laughs> she she literally falls backwards, <laughs> lands on the ground. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Fractal. Oh, uh, I've fought a lot of things in my day, right? Yes. I've seen a lot of stuff. This is kind of scary. Which part? A bubbly <laughs> on the ground. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's usually far enough not, not to get uh, hung over around me. Given my uh, <clears throat> usual vocation of, of of being an alarm clock, yeah, I'll say she's gonna regret it later. But you, you, you can hear, you can almost hear the metal like bending as it oh it gives like a Grinch smile for a second. No one else sees it. Then I'll say, well, uh, I suppose I could get a little drunk. Maybe I'll forget some of this. Yeah, come on, she's she's so, she's on her back. Yeah, come join us. So, yeah. before you become poisoned, why do you do that? Is it some sort of 
physical need or response to something? Oh, Why yeah. do you physically stress, admit it? Usually. Yes. What what is stress? Well, <laughs> says in, in, in a I'm town of college so... students, everyone rushes to tackle. <laughs> I'm so jealous right now. Your friend doesn't know what yes, stress yes. is. Is it like the load bearing weight, or in a way, it feels like a load bearing weight? <laughs> Let me uh, let me try to describe it a little in your your little scenario. Right. He so uh, lucky one, Bob. The lucky ones. Mm -hmm. All right. Don't listen to the drunk ones. I but uh, right. when you were uh, you had that little secret of yours, right? Try to yeah. try to imagine. Yeah, I'm not gonna say no details. Relax. <laughs> and what you felt like there is a little bit of stress. Anyway, yeah. okay. Imagine, <laughs> imagine the port, the pot before you wanted to share those secrets. Imagine if one of us found out, and we just looked at you, and mm -hmm. you didn't get any sort of response, but you knew that we knew. You didn't know how we were gonna react if we were waiting, buying our time, or something like that. Just imagine sitting there, trying to think what could possibly happen to you. I don't even know what the secret is, but this is stressing me out so Fra bad. Fragile just goes over his little, little program he set this in his head of the very danger protocols you had on him, and then just the little things like, poison this one, skin this one. <laughs> Definitely no idea. <laughs> <laughs> right. And she gets and mad. Oh, sorry, continue. Yeah, just imagine like something very dangerous could happen to you. Let's say you're being hunted by someone. And you can't find imagine. them. Imagine. You don't know where they are. And they could know where you are. They could be waiting for it. Uh huh. And you're worried. You don't want to die. Stuff like that. You know, I think I know what that feeling is. Uh, okay, so it's that feeling. You know, that feeling of being hunted. Okay. At all at all points in time. And he just gives you, like, a lopsided look. <laughs> I think I get it. <laughs> Speaking of being hunted. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I was about to say, I don't think you've heard about the rumor yet, Fractal. No, I have not. I have not. I think only one who knows is... Uh... Can you run into another clanky bit around here? But Fractal. Oh. Oof. I'm sorry, what? No. You run into a different clanky? I don't think I've ever seen Warforged. another Warforged. Mm. No. Well, I thought you'd be, like, magnetically attracted or something. But no, no, no. I'd be tempted to, to, to see what makes them tick, but, you know. We heard a rumor that there were some people looking for one of their friends. Oh. And they were also a clanky. Oh. Yeah, some elf lady. <laughs> Fractal goes stock still for a second. Elf, maybe? That look on your face, I think now you're experiencing some stress. <laughs> he doesn't have a look on his face, it's just metal. But the, but the fire does change from green to purple. <laughs> Possibilities yeah, good. of the unknown. Inevitability. Calculate all possibilities. Elf lady. There's a lot of elves in here, you know. Could you just... Was there anything particular about this elf lady? Uh, you remember people remember. saying she was very unsettling. Oh, she had that really? feeling about her that made you all nervous. Yeah. And, um... She was looking for something? So she was looking for another robot. Another she, clanky. She was looking for a Warforged. Yeah. Did they give a description of that? No. Uh, not that I recall. But she had a she had somebody following her around, right? Uh-huh. She had, she had another okay. assistant with her. Okay, good. Phew. Obviously. So, all right. They're not here. 
Where are they? Oh, they're gone they... now. Yeah, I was talking to Congress. Uh, That's me letting well, Kagaz know. Oh. Yeah, I, I think they left. Is Suta when she wasn't drunk and Ned were talking about it? Okay, bits and pieces. All right, cool, cool, cool. As the uh, flesh ones say, that, 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 that is all right. Yes. Wow. I feel like everyone's being a little awkward today. Yes, this is uh, a normal reaction. I will now go to do the sleeping thing. Uh, could you help me get these two upstairs? Yeah. I suppose. No, 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 no. What time of day is it, DM? Asking God. Fucking uh, night uh, time. Probably about my guy. Like 10 o'clock at night now. It's it time for a bed bye. How many patrons are in the bar? How many patrons uh, can you fucking Not super stop? many. It, it's, you know, it's like a Tuesday. Yo, how oh, she's going to grab Bobaline, no. grab Cogger, grab no. him a drink, and start singing some shanties. Trying to get the mood going. We'll go to sleep after this song. Um, I don't believe you. Don't where? Believe. But just one last thing. But I guess I'll head to bed. Uh, where did did you hear these rumors? Uh, like I said, I heard them from Ned and Suta. I think Susa was listening to them in the lounge to the research research place, and uh, yeah, Ned did some I... roaming around in either the residential or the merchants. Heard it. They were either in the residential or the merchants. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm... Alright, I'm going to... I think I'm going to head back out for, uh, for a little bit. <laughs> I'll be back before I, I, I have to recharge. And, and Frackle's going to retrace his steps back to the residential district. What are you looking for? I'm going to attempt something. It's going to be a little weird. Most everything I'm... your character does is weird. That's valid. That, that is the point. Uh, I would like to try and... Uh... Not, like, show it outright, but have the finger out of its ca carrying place. Okay. And he's going to try an impromptu magic, almost a divining rod, for that particular thing. The energy? Yes. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make me an intelligence check, just your spellcasting check. Arcana. Sure. Arcana! Eighteen. Uh, it, it it takes you a minute, um, to kind of get it set up. You're fiddling with it, uh, while you're getting it set up. No, no, I'll have that be something you notice later. Uh, so, uh, you are looking around, and uh. You're fiddling with trying to get this magic to work, and suddenly you feel that you've you've succeeded. So you're wandering around the residential district. Yeah, I'll, I'll start there first. It's hard to tell if what you're feeling in the divining rod of the finger is mm -hmm. a residual... Like, it's picking up its own energy, because it's technically the same signature. Or if it's picking up something faint. It's hard to tell here. I'm just looking for a reaction at all. <laughs> right. It's hard to tell if it's a reaction to another, uh, a, and I, another form of the same energy. Mm -hmm. Or if it is reacting to itself. Okay. I'm going to, uh... Do the same and just wander through the merchant district as well. Okay. You.
as you are wondering, it's faint, but it might, you, you think there's some sort of reaction. It's very faint. Fire turns a white. And then he just slowly puts the finger back in the in the compartment. Uh, it is a bit of a bigger reaction as you get closer to the research district. Narrow's eyes. How late is it now? Uh, probably about ten ten thirty. I am going to head back to the inn, but I'm going to make note of that. Yeah. You gather it was more of just like there's more concentrated energy there as though that's where the most time was spent. Uh, eventually he will start to head back, like his code will start to head back to green, but it's it's a very muted green. <laughs> yep. Uh, so as you are putting the finger back in the, <clears throat> the uh, enclosure in your chest, you hear a strange uh, rattling sound. It's very, 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 very close to you. I'll, uh, I'll my head will kind of snap up uh, in, in in immediately as if he was in a stupor and look towards where the rattling is. Then your head would not snap up. Oh, you look down. And your hands are shaking and rattling against your chest. He's gonna try. No, <laughs> he doesn't even know how to fix this. They're just going. The flecks of white and purple starting to go back into the flame. Stop that! Stop that! This is as you're putting the finger away initially. So this is yeah. right after the initial shock. Yeah, just it gets back in there. Just get in there. The the compartment closes. As the compartment closes, you kind of press your hands against the compartment, and the force of pressing kind of stills them long enough. And when you take them back, they've mostly stopped shaking. There's still a little bit of a tremor, but it's hardly noticeable. I'm going to press them together, and I'm going to pretty much cast Shock and Grasp it into both of them. <laughs> Defibrillator. Yeah, that stops them. Yeah. They got tased. That's That stops yeah. them entirely. I'll, say. I'll roll it. I'll, I'll roll it to see what damage I take. I take 10 lightning damage. Effectively stops the tremors. It, you are... I'll say you you kind of stand there in a stupor for a turn, so about six seconds you just kind of uh. right. Ooh. All right, so slightly smoking, tr trying to force it back into into proper green, and he's just going to start mechanically walking back toward the end. Okay, how is that different from normal? <laughs> yes, you do. Yeah, he usually has protocol makes him like walk like a how you you think an elf would walk very languid. But now it's just like tin, uh, tin man's going. And, uh, yeah, he, he's not even looking. He's just like going in there and walking up to where he assumes our room is. <laughs> yep. You do find your room. Mm -hmm. Uh,. uh... Okay. Okay. All right. Is Sutha in there? And I assume Bobline, whatever. Are they in the room? Bobline has his own room. Sutha. Did, did Sutha? Like, it's been a while. So did Sutha ever eventually come back up to bed? That we're gonna drag up there. Uh, so what time it's do you about get back? 11, it's about 11 at night by the time 
Fractal makes it back to the. He inn. would have taken a slower walk all the way home just because it's he's about he's not. Thirty at night by the time Fractal makes it back to the inn. Because he had to force his uh, color back to normal. They would have kept going with the singing. I assume maybe had uh, Kaga has joined in. They wouldn't have noticed him coming in. Okay. Well, go eventually, eventually, uh, if it happens within an hour, eventually when you come back up to the room, it's, if it's locked, it's locked, but you probably have a key. Yeah, I'll say the, the, the proprietress would have given you guys five keys, seeing that there's five of you. Yeah. Just two of them are for the same room. Pyro, I'm just going to say whatever it is you're doing, she's, when she gets back up there, you know she was usually jovial. But she's going to be, as soon as she comes in, she's not going to notice what you're doing. She's going to be drunk. Uh, you're going to notice, because when you open the door, there is a large, bone-white, <laughs> Wendigo-looking motherfucker ready to cut you in half. Oh. And, there, and the bed is turned over, and there is a barricade. <laughs> Okay. And Fractal's sitting there with, with the staff pointed right at you. Okay. Granted well, how drunk she was, Kages would have made sure she got in the room, so Kages would have been right behind. You see that too. Kages, you would have noticed right when they were getting to the room, she would have started crying, and then y'all would have entered for some reason. She would have just started bawling her eyes out and then opening the room, and then the scene appears, but continue, Pyro. Yeah. You, you both walk in, and you see this large thing just about to slash down you, but um, but then uh, hey, it's like friend. Uh, oh, what the, what the hell's going on here? I don't. What the heck? What the hell are you doing? Who are you? Say your name. That's F. What? Oh, right there, in case you forgot. She just Wait. walks up to him. Oh, I, I, I wouldn't. <laughs> she does. She does. Uh, what, Tracy? Actually, no. Uh, it, well, uh, make me a... Let's see, which spell is... What, what, what would he think would have an effect on this woman? Oh, dear God. This is all he has that, that, that's actually prepared. Whoopsies. All right. Um... Yeah, it's also he's also concentrating. Yeah, uh, I think it's a con save as ice uh, uh, pretty much flashes out from him. <laughs> uh, pretty much though, the entire floor is going to be covered in frost. So maybe a con save. You, you uh, pass, so so, so so you're not stopped. I'm not blessed. Why does it keep showing up? Go away. Oh, damn. So yeah, you're yeah, you, you, you'll probably t see here. Let me just post it. Um, actually, I'm drunk out of my mind. Actually, I'm drunk out of my mind. I failed at the twelve. I assume that would give me disadvantage on con saves. Been that drunk. So you are caked in a, in a layer of ice, and your legs are stock still. Yep. Roll the 3d8, please. Yeah, roll 3d8. Oh, yes. It does say half, right? Yeah, half oh, on... Okay. It yeah. says some no hindrance. Yeah, he takes half, I take full. Ten. Identify yourselves. Designate. Oi! Clanky! What the hell's that for? Identify yourselves. I thought I just made it clear, you idiot. That's half what? I'm the one and only. That Ain't nobody. It's not half light. Sotha. The green, the normally gr like exuberant green light is completely covered in flecks of light blue and fucking white. Sotha <laughs> half light. When we Here's first met. Train, sliding up. <laughs> She's just gonna say. If it wasn't me, was Sutha not? Oh, God. She's still bawling her eyes out. 
when we first no met. Is... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, Connor. you go. <laughs> yeah, I uh, imagine oh, you got man. got past the, uh, the the big Wendigo creature, but it's just blocking the doorway. You probably ducked yeah. under its arm. She just got to say hi, I'm mad, but yeah, continue. Speak, ne ne Nito, or I will just say nothing. You're having a moment. Go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I already said it, so. She just says how they met. She saved him from the cliff. From the sand where they met. Where uh... Does Frank respond to the message? Say and uh, kind of cut out with her. She says how they met. Mm -hmm. He kind of twitches for a second. A spark comes out of the side of his head. Your identification, your designation. What is what is your des designation in my system? Servant, follower. She's wise enough to know that's how fractal sees her. Your designation, Sutha, follow them. I'm kind of he curious doesn't... what the hell that makes me. Your designation, Cogs. I guess that works. Film is starting to creep in. His armor was before kind of like loose, now it is fully on. Helmet is ready to snap on, but he's like a uh, Jurassic Park style, just hand out, slowly approaching Fractal from across the room, seeing something's up because the flame is not green, correct? I heard that. No, before. the the flame is heavily like it's like green, but it's being almost corrupted by white and blue. Fractal, hey, what's going on, buddy? <laughs> the staff whips around to you. <laughs> it's me. Do you remember who I am? You, you, you have you, our designations. Kind of scans you for a second. Designation. Bellum. Colleague, and he'll shakily get the uh, the, the staff out of fucking firing range. He seems very twitchy. <laughs> well, I'm just going to continue to shuffle across the floor slowly. Uh, just the other day is it, today. uh before you do that, it, is Ned stealthing? Is he? Then that's a yes. Okay, I, I given uh, how the designations are working right now, he and, and I am on lookout. I, I have yeah, to you check. You would be you would be doing active perception. <laughs> Meets it, beats it. Oh, yeah, no. that means you. Spot um, him. as you're you're like almost at him, then <laughs> the entire flame. He's not going towards you. He's just he's at the doorway. He's listening I, from the doorway. You know I, you have been spotted, Ned. The flame goes stock still. Almost like a hologram. Designation. Threat. Stay that I are. am, Boyle. That I am. What does he do? Hi. Ned's just staring, staring at him. Pyro, what is dog? Uh, the flame itself stops, and I'm deciding on the color. It's it's one of two things. I'm gonna message live. <laughs> All right. Open my DM. Oh. Oh, that's what I'm doing. Good. 
them. May I act? There you go. Deal. Oh. Okay. So, what color is the flame? Uh, which one do you think, Liv? I, 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 I'm, I'm leaning towards the second one because I am also he's not feeling emotions one. correctly right now. No, I agree with the second one. You are not in an emotional state. If if we are agreeing with the term I used initially, mm -hmm. yeah, then it would be the second color. The fl uh, his his skull starting to be covered as the flame is starting to get flecks of black in there. Oh, two no, little like... two two little pinpricks of red in the eye sockets, just staring right at Ned. I've seen this before. Daggers slip out. Bellum will turn his head back, back behind the wall. Don't make any sudden moves. Ned, just stay back. Another yeah, spark uh, comes out out of the side of his head. You you can almost see claw marks a little bit as he's been kind of prodding at, at his own head, probably for like the like the almost hour <laughs> since Sooth has been down there drinking. Bellum's going to take out a small uh, mechanical device and start approaching. It, it is about the What's size the of the mountain pen. Okay. He's going to spend his action, use magical tinkering, to make it this thing display a hologram picture of your of their two heart to heart in the library earlier that day. It is it, it is a, an exact picture as Bellum remembers it of how your Tinkering went. Quote, quote. Yeah, I will, while you're uh, knuckle deep in my, in my mouth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, <It's>, had to. <laughs> not particularly far, but yeah. Elbow deep. But, uh, he sets that down in front of him and he goes, Fractal, take a picture. Tell me you can remember this. Remember what I told you? About your emotions? Emotions. And he's just gonna... The... <laughs> you see his hands are starting to shake and the staff just falls out of them. Helm does not make any sudden moves, just continues this whole time, just taking slow half steps forward. Pulls out another one. And he's trying to think of uh, memories that Fractal has with the others. Uh, this is a time where the other player characters can help Connor by reminding them of a moment they've had with Fractal that would do well to be made into a picture. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I just conjured an image of <laughs> Kaga's chucking practical. <laughs> Actually, uh, no didn't y'all have what was Ned threatened wasn't, wasn't it like an episode or two back where you did say like y'all were having like a very we exciting did, conversation? You know, you're right. Yeah. Uh, you right, like, we were very exciting over conversation. How annoying yeah. the. Yeah, y'all had camaraderie in that moment. Yeah. The one Bellum was thinking of was the time you would orc alarm clock him and you were on his back invisible. And then he yeah. fell backwards and squashed you like a fucking block. It's a static image. It cuts back a few <laughs> seconds before that. <laughs> Revisionist history, man. All right, see? <laughs> That's the second one down. Uh, he's trying to think of ideals, things that remind him of Fractal. So he's got the inventiveness there. The... the uh, playful misunderstanding of so social norms and what he'll use one of the infusions to just play the it's time to wake up it's time to wake up in fractal's voice over and over again hoping that this has a second meaning now not wake up from a sleep but from the state just i can uh, take things out i'm gonna roll a thing to to, to to gm yep i'm wondering the thing I'm going to have this be a particular stat because it makes sense. Okay. 
Uh, Fractal looks at you, looks at that, looks at you. And the flame shuts off. I don't think I actually want to die. And then he, uh, and then he falls over. Uh, we'll try and grab you. Powering down. <laughs> Shoots at a puff of steam. <laughs> Well, was there a pinned bell and pulled to open your head up before? Or did you just will, will it off? I, I, I had to will it open. <laughs> uh, he is looking over to be like, oh, shit, 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 is this a fatal shutdown? And it's just trying to be like, uh, how do you do CPR on a Warforged? Yeah, Hit, it with a hammer. Up. Hit it with a hammer! Yo, I'm up with that. Uh, uh, okay. You, uh, let's see, what, which one was mine? The Mantle of Shooting Stars? <laughs> Clear! <laughs> I do generate balls of lightning with this. And I can make one really big-ass ball of lightning. Claps his hands by, together. By the way, when mm. I when I pop out of existence, the, uh, the Wendigo puffs into smoke, and the uh, skull drops to the ground, I assume, like, bonking. Oh, yeah. Uh, Sutha. <laughs> it, it's not Bell will, it go well with Bell and goes, uh-oh, that's what happens when someone dies. And he will take or the one sphere with. Find out next time on Dragon. <laughs> he will then take the one, the one mega dense sphere of lightning, one of the things he has, uh, and clear. <laughs> Try and jumpstart Fractal back up. I'm just gonna mess you something in the lift, and you're, you're gonna laugh. <laughs> Please. Well, why are you fixing up, uh, Clanky? Oh, yeah. So it's, uh, why are crying? <laughs> oh yeah. Is she still frozen in the rhymes brining ice? I think uh oh. that that uh, uh lasts a minute and he'll just yeah. pull you out of it if he can. Yeah. Seeing that, seeing uh, she's like uh, yeah. Fractal does not respond. In the same voice that said the uh Initiating shutdown. Uh, it's it basically gives like a forced shutdown initiated. Time remaining, twelve hours. Well, I guess he's just taking a hell of a nap. All right. We'll pick his body up like uh, like the paintings of Christ once he was pulled off the cross, and is going to carry him to his room. I'm going to take care of him for the night. Do you have Sutha? I'm looking at Kaya. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Don't forget to take his stuff. <laughs> oh. He, he's got a deer all skull your... on the ground and a staff. Oh, all your shit and any arm, any fortifications Bellum can make are coming with. <laughs> the artificer is going to work with all the physics he knows. All the triangles you can imagine, baby. This room is getting blocked up. <laughs> And uh, Bellum is actually going to try and stay up all night and is going to ask a prayer from Celestian to give him the strength to make it through the night. Him, Bellum. Okay. To be able to sleep all night. Make me... He doesn't expect any uh, desperation. If I wake up as a dryad, I'm coming after you. <laughs> make me a spellcasting check. <laughs> Get it, boy! Yeah! Okay. You are able to stay up through the night without gaining a level of exhaustion. Hallelujah. Sutha, why are you crying? Can't be the first time you got attacked by Fractal. <laughs> no? It's not the reason. I just want to be left alone right now. All right. Well, I guess I'll be outside. Hi, guys. Eh? Thanks for the concern. She looks at her. Is Ned still behind the door? Like, back behind the way to the, the side? Ned followed Fractal and uh, Bellum. Oh, oh okay. All right. It, Bellum, Bellum would probably say it's probably best that you don't, you aren't the first face he sees, and uh, that he's going to stay up. Sneaky breaky. I am actively fortifying the room, so I would argue that an investigation would be m made as you're entering the room, as I'm looking for places to. Stop intruders. DM. Uh, 
investigation. If he slipped as a, yeah. I imagine he would definitely be able to slip past me initially, but as I'm fortifying the room with triangles and blocks and stuff, I would argue that would be an investigation check of me making sure all the places are covered to against Yeah, go ahead. Putting magical sensors? Oh, 18. Oh, unfortunately. <laughs> In the rafters, waiting to kill Raptor. <laughs> Dagger out, ready to drop. Miss him. My time is now. Yeah. By the way, I'm going to lay this out right now as I click my mage armor off, probably now. My AC is 14. <laughs> <laughs> good. Just in case you want to really drive, the, drive, drive that knife home, buddy. That's a sneaker. Now's yeah, a chance, Ned. <laughs> well, your, your time is now. <laughs> Kagas is just going to sit out in the hallway next to Sutha's door and not sleep. So, there we go. Yeah, you're fine. Blue dream, Sutha. He's gonna leave his one of his water skins in there, or well, his only water skin. Yeah, she right, got rid of the other. Yeah. So yeah, Please. fractal fractal overloaded. It's like, it sure is a good thing he found out what stress is today. <laughs> Kagas was thinking about making a joke, but he thought it was in bad in bad form. God, Kagas can see that. Is there anything else anyone wanted to do before going to sleep or staying up for the night? Uh, scream and shout and let it all out. Ned's watching yeah. Fractal overnight. Oh, good. Elm's got his uh, symbol of the Grove in his hand, and he's just. Uh, Working with his hands, just the one mean, hand where people like trace their thumb over it, just kind of back and forth all night. Does it mean Ned has to make a con check for safe? Damn, you uh, didn't give me those manticore teeth yet. I yeah, could put them on. Go ahead and make a con save, Ned, to stave off exhaustion. Oh, oh Ned, Ned, Ned's exhausted. Oh, uh, yeah. halfling. halfling. Oh, yeah, halfling. Halfling. Oh, halfling. 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 I may be an asshole, You're but good. I'm a fair asshole. asshole. If he's gonna kill me, he's gonna kill me. You're good. <laughs> there we a little go. bit immediately reaches like halfling, 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 halfling. No. Hey, no, you gotta, no. you gotta, gotta remember it. You gotta remember Something's it. Something's only on like the seventh morning. He goes, oh yeah. <laughs> Look, I forget shit on Karen all the time. You know how many times I should have dealt extra Nick product. Oh wow. <laughs> so, fractal. Yeah. In your shutdown, from all of the electric shocks that uh, you received, either self-inflicted or otherwise tonight, and oh yeah, he, mental he's shocks, been constantly using shock grasp on himself. Uh, <laughs> something unlocks in your memory banks. You had <clears throat> felt comforted initially earlier at the revelation that this elf that was looking for their Warforged associate, their former Warforged associate, had their assistant with them. And as this memory unlocks, you remember the face of your mistress. And all of the memories that you have vague and blurry of her begin to become just that much more in focus and you realize it wasn't just her. There was also a half-elf woman with her. Would you like me to say both of their names? Yes. As he mumbles them to himself, in whatever pseudo consciousness he has, or uh, inside his inside his head, you recall the name of your mistress, Barul, and as the memories become clearer and clearer, what floats to the top of your mind? As 
the primary contact you had, the main person that ever experimented on you. Barul was the mastermind of everything, of course. Barul is the one that built you, that activated you, that gave you the abilities that you had initially to do what you did before. But all of the modifications, all of the little tinkering, all of the day-to-day -day maintenance and interactions, those were from her assistant. And you remember her name. Elizair. And that's where we're going to pick up later. Did I get that in written format? Yes, you can. Uh, well, yes. <laughs> ah, how dare I? You know what else you get? You know what else? Yeah. You get level six. Yeah. Oh, just fractal, though. Not, not, none of the rest of us. Just him. Just fractal. I, I overclock for your four. sins. Everybody else goes back to level four. No, I'm kidding. Everybody gets I'm four. beating up hey. Bubble until I level up. <laughs> hey, he's the bill of this game. He's the main character. No! I'm, I'm fucking with you. God, I love, I, I, this is, I love D&D as a collaborative storytelling effort because I had so little prepared for today. The majority of what I had prepared was like, here's the list of departments and department heads, and here's some vague information you could probably get for them. And you guys went nowhere near there except to the head no. of the alchemy department. You went everywhere else, but at every turn you said, here you go, DM, here's something you can use. And I said, thank you so much, my children. Hey, he pulled Excellent. it off with flying colors. That was a great session from everybody. That was Fractal, really awesome. oh. Fractal came into the session oh. and chose violence. Damn. Roll twice, re-roll once, take whichever one you want. I'm not the cop. Yeah! I really just shot all those impurities. Look, look at that second roll. Look at it. Oh, beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful. Re-roll re once. Ned yeah. oh, already God, did I just it. Got two finally use leather. Ned already did it. No, cool. DM Fiat, no level oh, for you. <laughs> I get two more. Oh shit! This is two more infusions. Holy shit! I get Wait a minute. Uh, two more. You know, this is actually a very thematic thing for me. I think I I have proper necromancy now. I the big so. one. Yeah. Next level, yeah. yeah. Have, have animate dead. You're I overclocked for your sins, children. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs>